But I think a lot of times we take for granted just how important worship and praise is. You know, God does not need my worship. He does not need my praise. But he allows me the opportunity to praise and worship him for my benefit. Now, I want you to understand that it's for my benefit. It's not for God's benefit that I worship him. I am a created being just like you are. But he deserves our worship and our praise. And it benefits me and it benefits you when we will praise and worship God no matter where we're at in our life. No matter how bad you think your troubles are. I hope that today you will see that you can worship God anywhere and anytime. And when you do, things will happen. You'll start losing sight of your problems. You'll lose focus of what's going on around you. And you'll start focusing on Jesus Christ. Which is where our eyes should be fixed, right? He's the author and the perfecter of our faith. We're to fix our eyes on him. And that's what praise and worship does. It fixes our eyes on him. Our spiritual eyes. We're going to be in Acts chapter 16. Just to give you a quick run through. Paul and Silas, they're going to prayer. Okay, They're, they're going to the church. They're going to, to have their daily prayer. Be, they're being good, good little boys. Doing what they're supposed to be. They're not doing anything wrong. They're just headed to prayer. Like a lot of us, you know, we walk through this world and we don't really do anything wrong. We're just doing our thing, right? And this girl that is filled with a spirit of divination, as the Bible calls it, starts following them around. Starts screaming and shouting that, hey, these men, they're telling us how to be saved and to come to Jesus Christ and all these things. Finally, Paul, like, hey, in the name of Jesus Christ, you come out of that woman, leave me alone. I'm tired of it. She'd been following them around for days doing this. Well, her handlers, or whatever you want to call them, I got a word, but I'm not going to use it. They got upset. They was like, man, they went our business. They'd been selling this girl. They'd, they'd basically made her a prostitute, a spiritual prostitute. They were making money off, off of her fortune telling and that sort of thing. And they were upset. Said, Man, you just cost us our livelihood. So they start getting in trouble, Paul and Silas do. And they ain't done nothing. They's what? Going to prayer. Living their life. Doing their thing. Being obedient to God. Living their life for Jesus Christ. Doing what he has called them to do. And in verse 20 it says, And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city. So they take them to the, take them to the judge, take them to the court, take them to the police, take them you know, to whoever's in charge. Said, hey, these guys are causing trouble in our city. Even though they hadn't done anything wrong. Now, that's persecution. And I thought about that for a while, and I thought, you know, we really don't understand persecution in this country. We don't, we don't really understand it full, to the full extent. And we really don't. But we have all been persecuted if we belong to Jesus Christ, because we all have an adversary. Satan attacks each and every one of us. All the time. He's looking for an opportunity to attack you in your life, to persecute you. If you look up that word persecution in the Greek, it means to hunt down and to destroy. He is hunting you down and trying to destroy you. And that's what's happening to Paul and Silas right now. They're being hunted down to be destroyed. Next verse. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Next verse. Then the multitudes rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. Now they're getting in a bad situation. 
All because they were just living their life and doing their thing, being obedient to God, and yet they're ending up in this bad situation. They're being persecuted just for being obedient. You know, sometimes I think in our life we, we kind of have pity parties. We think, man, I'm, I'm doing good, I'm going to church, I'm trying to read God's word, I'm trying to live by his word, but no matter what I do, the, it just seems to get worse. Things just seem to get tougher. I'm trying to do the right thing, and things are getting harder for me. Goes back to that adversary, that devil, the Satan, that is attacking you. He doesn't want you living for Jesus Christ. He doesn't want you being obedient. He wants you to be bound. He wants you to be chained. He wants to destroy you. And he will hunt you down. And he will wait for the opportunity to attack when you are the weakest. So they're getting beat with rods. Next verse. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison. And I think sometimes we feel like we, we get a bunch of stripes laid on us in this world. You know, whether it's in our marriage or whether it's at, at our job, whether we're, we're just in a bad relationship, no matter what it is, we, we feel like we've been beat. We feel like we've been whipped a few times. I know sometimes I, I feel just flat out beat down and whooped. And I would imagine Paul and Silas, they're, they're in a lot of pain right now. Well, I think a lot of y'all are in a lot of pain right now. Maybe not in the physical sense like Paul and Silas at this point, but in an emotional sense or in a spiritual sense. They threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. They had nowhere to go. They were in the middle of the jail, surrounded by security guards, and they're chained to the floor. And they didn't do anything wrong. Maybe you didn't do anything wrong, but yet you find yourself in this jail cell chained to the floor, beaten. The door's been closed and the key's been thrown away. And you hadn't done anything wrong. You've just been an obedient follower of Jesus Christ. You were headed to prayer and... They just scooped you up and took you away. And you, you've been fighting, you've been struggling, you've been trying to claw your way out. And the more you try, the deeper you get. I mean, that's really sometimes how I feel. The more I try, the deeper I get. Because I'm relying on myself to dig out. Go to Matthew 5, 11 and 12. It says, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you. When, when they say bad things, evil things against you and persecute you. And say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now you say, that don't make a lot of sense. Why would I want to be hunted down and killed and have mean things said about me? That don't don't sound like a good thing well in reality it is and we'll talk about more of that in a minute but remember last week we talked about that word blessed it can mean a lot of different things it can mean happy or full of joy but it also can mean to be put into the position to receive God's grace and I think that's what it means here is you're putting in you are put in the position to receive God's grace when you're persecuted, when Satan comes against you, why is Satan come against you? He's not going to come against the ones that already belong to him. He's going to come after the one that is living their life for Jesus Christ, the one that is headed to prayer, the one that 
is just living their life for him and not out running around doing all these wrong things. He's going to attack those that are about to make a decision for Jesus Christ or the ones that just have made a decision for Jesus Christ or the ones that have made a decision for Jesus Christ. If you belong to Satan, he's not going to bother you. He's got you right where he wants you. He wants you comfortable where you're at. So he's going to leave you alone. But if you have accepted Jesus Christ or you're headed, headed towards that decision, he wants you uncomfortable where you're at. And he will attack and he will persecute you. Next verse. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You're not the only one that's ever been persecuted. You are not alone in your situation. There's plenty of us here that have been through similar situations. But you have a heavenly father that wants to be right there in the middle of it with you. He doesn't promise that he's going to make it easy. He doesn't promise that it's going to be just roses from here on out. But he promises to walk through it with you. Go back to Acts 16 verse 25. And this is where it gets interesting. You know, they've been arrested. They've been beaten. They've been thrown in jail. And they're probably sitting there going, what in the world did I do to deserve this? But that's, that's where their pity party stops. Now, most of us, we, we would continue to gripe and complain and be like, this is not fair. Life ain't fair. Why in the world... Have, has this come upon me because I hadn't done anything wrong? I didn't do anything to them. And look where I'm at. Following the Lord has just dug me a deeper hole and I'm never going to get out of this. But they didn't. They had a different attitude. They had a different perspective. And that's the perspective that I want you to see today. It says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They began to praise and worship God and to speak to him. In the middle of this tribulation, they began to worship God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Now I want you to hear that. When you are in the depths of despair and you begin to worship God, people's going to listen. They're just naturally, they're going to listen. They see what you're going through. They know what's happened. Now why in the world is that guy worshiping God? I might want to listen to this. He might have something that'll help me. He's going through some bad stuff. He's bleeding. He's got 63 stripes on his back from where they took that cane pole and just beat the ever-loving crap out of him. And he's worshiping the Lord. I'm going to listen to him. It's like, hmm, That's, it's interesting, to say the least. I mean, if I'd been beat with a rod and thrown into jail, would I have that attitude of worship? Is that what I would go to? Would I start praying? Would I start singing songs and praises to God? I don't know. But I want to. I want to learn to have that attitude. I want to learn to praise and worship God no matter what kind of situation I'm in. Because I know he's in control. I know he has a purpose. Next verse. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. So, you know, they began to worship and praise God in their, in their circumstance, where they were at. In the darkest time, they began to worship and praise God. And then things started to happen. You know, I believe it's because their focus shift, shifted from their problems to their creator. From, from their problems to their savior. 
They quit wallowing around in what was going on around them. And they began to focus on the one that could change what was going on around them. Immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Even the ones around them, the people around them, their chains fell off. Their cell doors came open. Why? Because they chose to worship God where they were at. And God used that. God took the praise and worship and the prayers of Paul and Silas to change the lives of the people around them and their life. I hope that gives you a different outlook of what praise and worship can do in your life. And while we come together and we worship God before I get up here and talk for 15 or 20 minutes, it gets our heart ready to receive what God has for us. You know, if Paul and Silas would have chose to just sit there and wallow in their circumstance in their own self-pity and, oh, poor pitiful me, look what's happened to me, their circumstances are not going to change, are they? But when they said, hey, it don't matter. I still have God. Jesus Christ still died on the cross for me. I've been forgiven of my sins. The blood of the Lamb has washed me whiter than snow. I'm just going to praise Him for who He is. It doesn't matter where I'm at or what I'm going through. I'm just going to praise Him. And God took that and he did this miraculous work in their life and in the life of the people around them. How many of us have that attitude of praise and worship in our life that we're willing to praise and worship God anytime and anywhere? Most of us don't. Most of us, we base our praise and worship off of our emotion. Hey, everything's going great. Woo, praise the Lord, man, he is good. When it's not going good, it's like, man, why am I even wasting my time? Why do I even come to church? Why do I read his Bible? Everything's just getting harder and harder. Every, every time I pray, every time I read his word, it just seems like I'm getting beat down a little bit more. Hey, you have the option to praise him right on through that stuff. Start worshiping God. When things are tough, praise him. When things are good, praise him. It don't matter where you're at. Your perspective will change when you start praising and worshiping God. Go to uh, 1 Chronicles uh, 16 verse 8. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Now, there's a difference between thanksgiving and praise. Thanksgiving is we give thanks to him for what he has done. But when we praise him, we worship and praise him for who he is. So there is a difference, and we are called as Christians to do both, to give him thanks and praise. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Hey, when we start worshiping and we start praising, we start thanking him, we're letting his deeds be known. We're letting everybody that is around us that can hear us know who God is and what he has done for you. How many of us are willing in the deepest, darkest time of our life, willing to proclaim Jesus Christ and let people know who he is and what he's done? There's something about when we share God with other people that it helps us. I mean, it helps them too, but it, it really benefits us as well. When I know that I'm going through something and yet I, I choose to spread Jesus Christ and his gospel to other people, it helps me. You know what? I realize I'm not going through this in vain. God has put me in a situation to where I can honor and glorify him where I can help somebody else, where I can spread a little light into the darkness, all because I chose to praise and worship him. Now, God works all these things out. He is the creator. 
He is the, the master of the universe. And if he's got you somewhere, just praise him. And let him work. You just be obedient. Next verse. Sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wondrous works. Next verse. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. If you want to seek the Lord, start with his praise. Give him thanks. And sing to him. Next. Seek the Lord in his strength. You know, when we start praising and worshiping him, we receive his strength. I don't know how it works. I don't have to know how it works. I just know that he gives it to me. And that I want it and I need it. What I'm going through right now, what you're going through right now, you need his strength. If you need his strength, seek him, praise him, and thank him. No matter where you're at. Seek his face forevermore. Next verse. Remember his marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Are you willing to praise God in your circumstance? No matter where you're at. Because it can be the difference between making it through or just giving up and laying down. Next verse, or go back to uh, Acts 16. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. So this miracle had happened. God had shaken the foundation of the jail, he had loosened the chains, the doors had swung open, the jailer wakes up and goes, oh my goodness, they're going to kill me because I've let all the prisoners escape, so I'm just going to go ahead and kill myself. I'm going to go ahead and end it right now because I have failed at my job. Next verse. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm for we are all here. Paul chose to stay. He knew God had put him in a position to glorify his name. He didn't know who, he didn't know how, he didn't know when, but he knew he was there for a reason. So he called out to that jailer and said, hey, hold on, don't, don't do that. Let me talk to you for a minute. Next verse. Then he called for a light and ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He realized that, hey, these guys are different. They've been worshiping and praising God all night long, even though they've been beat to a pulp. And they ain't really done anything wrong that I know of. How can I have what you have? How can I be what you are? How can I have joy even when Everything around me is darkness. Next verse. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. All we got to do is believe, trust in Jesus Christ. He says, if you want what I have, he says, you can have it through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one that came as a man died on a cross, shed his blood for the forgiveness of your sins, and it rose on from the grave on the third day. If you want what I have, you can have it. And this is how you get it, through Jesus Christ. And then we praise and worship him all the time, no matter where we're at in our life. Next. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. You know, it didn't just stop with the jailer. It went to all the ones that the jailer had contact with, that he lived with. You know, it was kind of like a flame. It started out small and it just started getting bigger. Why? All because Paul and Silas decided to praise and worship God in their circumstance. A revival happened. A revival started all because they chose to worship God in their circumstance. 
How many of us are going through something that is hard and is tough? A revival could start all because you are willing to worship and praise God in what you're going through. Because somebody else is watching. Somebody else is going to see how you handle what you're going through. And when they see you praising and worshiping God, guess what? They're going to want to have that. Man, that guy's he's full of joy. And I know what he's going through. He shouldn't be. Hey, when we belong to Jesus Christ, we can have joy anywhere, anytime. Amen. Next verse. And he took them the same hour of that night and washed their stripes. So the jailer took them. He starts cleaning them up. They've, they've shared the good news of Jesus Christ with him and his house. And he's, he's starting to clean them up a little bit. And immediately he and his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into the house, he set food before them and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Jimmy, if you want to start coming up. Now I'm going to read uh, part of 1 Chronicles uh, chapter 16, starting in the 23rd verse. And I want y'all to I want y'all to listen to this. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. That tells me every day I need to praise him for my salvation. I need to praise him for who he is. I need to give him thanks for what he has done. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. If you hear nothing else today, hear that. That he is great and he deserves our praise. Just simply because of who he is. He is also to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. He is our creator. He's, he's our redeemer. He's our sustainer. He's the one that we can look to in our times of, tr of struggle and heartache and pain. No matter where we're at, we can look to Him. And He'll give us strength. He'll help us walk through whatever it is we're walking through. He'll bring us through the other side. All the while, we're holding His hand, praising and worshiping Him. But you know, when we quit and we fail to praise God, it's like we let go of His hand. No, I'm just going to sit right here, God. I don't want to go any further. I've been on the journey long enough, and look where I'm at. I'm just going to, I'm just going to jerk my hand back. I'm just going to sit right here, and I'm going to wallow in my self-pity. I'm going to cry in my shame. I'm going to stay in my chains because I don't, I don't want to go any further. But you know what? When I choose to worship and praise God no matter where I'm at, He drags me. He gives me a strength to take one more step. He revives me with His Holy Spirit. He says, you are my son and you can do this. You can overcome the world through my son, Jesus Christ. Just keep on keeping on and don't give up and don't look back. But you got to worship and praise me. Give me thanks. Not because I need it, but because I deserve it. God deserves every bit of glory, praise, honor, and thanks that we can give him. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. How many of us want to be glad this morning? How many of us need his strength this morning? It says it's in his place. If you want to be in his place, begin to worship him. Lose sight of what's around you. And focus on Him and you will be in His place. You will be seeking His face. He says, when you seek my face, you'll find me. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due His name. I want you to think about that. Give to the Lord the glory due His name. 
It's the name above all names. No other name is given under heaven by which men shall be saved. It's the greatest name. Yahweh, Jehovah, Lord, Master, Christ, the Anointed One of God. Bring an offering and come before Him. You say, well, I don't have anything to give. I don't have anything to offer. My life is so terrible, I don't have anything to give. Well, that's where you're wrong. You have your life. He says, bring me your life. Offer me your life. Bring it before me, and I'll give you everything that I have. Everything that I have will be yours. Doesn't mean your life here on this earth is going to be easy, but it means it's not going to last forever, and the tribulation's going to end, and my son's going to come back and get you. And then you're going to come, and you're going to live in heaven with me for all of eternity, where there's no more pain, there's no more struggle, there's no more heartache. All these things are going to pass away. But just keep praising and worshiping me through it all. No matter what. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his house, of the beauty of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. And let them say among the nation, the Lord reigns. How many of us believe that the Lord reigns in our life? No matter what's going on, the Lord is still in control. Let the sea roar in all its fullness. Let the field rejoice in all that is in it. Then the trees of the woods shall rejoice before the Lord, for He is coming to judge the earth. He's coming to judge he's coming back I can praise him for that I can praise him for that because I belong to him and when he comes back I will be judged and I'm going to be found in his kingdom through his son Jesus Christ no matter what's going on I can find joy in that Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Hey, maybe you've stopped praising God. Well, come and ask for forgiveness. Because His mercy is new today. It'll be new tomorrow if tomorrow even comes. So let's not waste the opportunity to come and get right with God and start praising Him no matter where we're at in this life. As y'all stand and say, Save us, O oh God, our salvation. Gather us together and deliver us from the Gentiles, from the ones that are wicked, the ones that are evil. Deliver us from Satan, our adversary that's persecuting us, that's attacking us day after day and night after night. To give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. I want you to hear that last phrase, to triumph in your praise praise we get victory when we praise God how many of us need a little victory in our life how many of us need a little triumph in our situations praise God anytime anywhere it is a privilege to praise and worship God for who he is it benefits me it doesn't benefit him but he allows me to praise him so that I can get strength to carry on. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And all the people said, Amen. Let it be. And they praised the Lord. You know, this altar is open for salvation. Today is the day of salvation. It's always open for salvation. For salvation if you need to come and ask Jesus Christ to save you to forgive you of your sins of the things that you've done wrong in this life this altar is open for that this altar is also open for praise and for worship 
This altar is open for strength to get through the day. Sometimes I just need to get through today. I don't need to worry about tomorrow. I got to make it today. I need the strength to get through the day, Lord. Come and praise and worship Him. This altar is open for prayer, for whatever you need to talk to Him about. But don't leave here today before you truly worship God in your heart. If you believe and trust in Jesus Christ, there's no reason why you should not be able to worship Him.